Um, so we'll do a quick roll call. It looks like Emma is not here yet. So, um, mm -hmm. Linda Kekos, I don't see her, her either. Rodney Kunath. Hi, Rodney. This me. Sure. Counselor mm -hmm. Marianne LaBarge. Right Okay. Um, Kathy Murray. Here. Hello, uh, Marilyn Claire. Here. And then uh, Michael Morton. I don't see. Oh, he is here. Yep. Oh. My phone. Hi, Michael. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Nice weather. It's cooling down a bit. Yeah, definitely. And a Amy Sugihara. Here. Hello. Okay, cool. So do we have any public comments today? Looks like mm -hmm. not. Okay. So the next item is the approval of the previous minutes from last month. Move to approve. Okay. Second. Okay. Hey, uh, Jeremy, can we just, uh, for the record, can we just state what month they are? I believe they're for the mm -hmm. April minutes. Yeah, so it's June, I was going to, but then Marianne said, okay, um, June 13th, 2023. And Marianne, you say you approve. Uh, Marilyn, you second, yes. or you, you, well, and, uh, you seconded by Marilyn. Yep. Okay. Um, so, Rodney, do you approve the minutes from last month? Yes. 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 Okay. Kathy? Yes. <laughs> Um, Marilyn? Yes. And Councilor Barge? Yes. Michael Morton? Yes. And Amy? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to discuss the accessibility for St. John's Episcopal mm -hmm. Church. We have some guests here. Welcome. Welcome to all of you. Hi, thanks. Thank you very much for having us here. I'm Sarah Wiedemann, and I'm here with um, my colleague, Barbara Kellum, oh, and we are part of the leadership team at St. John's Episcopal Church, which is at 48 Elm Street in Northampton. Um, we're just here actually to ask uh, uh, politely <laughs> 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 if, um, if there is interest or a uh, availability for someone or someone's to come over and check out our site. Um, our building, our church is old. We're almost 200 years old and our building um, was built, the building we're in right now was built in 1893. We did a lot of uh, improvements right before COVID um, that have mm -hmm. made the church a lot more accessible, but there's pieces that are kind of uh, missing and we we don't want to be inadvertently not accessible um, because we're just not aware of something. And it's not so much architectural ADA sort of compliance. It's more of like the lived experience of different people with disabilities um, and how they experience getting into and experiencing the church and the services at the church, which include the Mana Community Kitchen, the Drop-In Community Center, and a numerous um, 12 step and uh, other groups. Hey. Yes. Um, Sarah, can you give the location of that church? Yes, yeah, sure. It's 48 Elm Street, mm -hmm. which is right next to the Smith College Art Museum. Yeah, I've been in there many times. I, I have a question for you, mm -hmm. Sarah. Yes, ma'am. There, there is access, correct, going into that church. I've been in there. There is. Yes. You know yes. that side building attached mm -hmm. to it? Yes. Because we had family members. We had a service there for my cousin's funeral. And we had a couple of people in wheelchairs, and they were able to access very freely going through that other side building connected. You've got mail. Um, yes, that's right. We do have a ramp um, accessible door with um, push button access, uh, which works most of the time <laughs> and occasionally not. Um, and then when you move into this, the sanctuary space, yeah. when we've rearranged the sanctuary space a little bit this summer. Um, but that continues because we have these long wooden antique pews. Uh -huh. um, that continues to be a place where we get kind of caught up. 
um, my son's in a wheelchair, so we have kind of, but I'm doing the maneuvering for him. So it's different for somebody in a, a manual wheelchair versus a power wheelchair versus somebody who is helping somebody navigate the space, as well as other people, people with walkers and the things that, that you sit on with your knee that roll around. Um, so, uh, and that's just part of, that's just part of physical accessibility. There's also the issue of, you know, auditory accessibility. So and what so are you looking for on the Commission on Disabilities? Mm -hmm. We know that there's access, but coming into the sanctuary is a different ball game here. We're looking at the, the way that the benches are installed makes a difficulty, correct, for people with different forms of disabilities. Is that yeah. what I'm hearing? Yeah, basically, yeah. We're just, we're looking for some different perspectives on where we might be um, not as accessible as we could be. Right. Amy's got her hand up. <laughs> oh, sorry, Amy. Go ahead. No problem. Um, Sarah and Barbara, I would be happy to meet you there. Um, I use a manual wheelchair and if it's short distance, I can use forearm crutches. So I could um, even bring both and, you know, to be able to have those two perspectives, if that's helpful, but I'd be happy to, to meet you there. That would be wonderful. Um, I, Lynn Horan, who's a, a parishioner, um, has come also. Um, and in fact, it's those little things that we've discovered that would make a huge difference. For example, yes, we have, um, you know, a ramp outside. We've got a a, 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 a disability uh, parking on the area right there, but we don't have um, as yet, although we're working on it, um, a, a gravel or uh, an extension for a side ramp. Um, uh, so, for, so, uh, so that you not only park in the parking place, but get out of um, get out of the van um, uh, as well. So it's those fine tuning details that I think we're really, um, really hoping to um, to get some perspective on. So, Amy, that would be really helpful. Thank you. That's great. Oh yeah, and I so appreciate your inquiry. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yes, thank you, um, Council Barch. Yes. Amy, thank you for offering that. I would love to go to that also, but depending on my schedule, it's pretty heavy. So if we have a date, I would like to be notified on the date and the time. Okay. Yep. And um, I, I, I can, I can also, I'd be happy to come by too. I have a, like a bit, like a, I ride a power wheelchair, which is kind of like big and bulky. Yeah. So that might be a good thing to test out also. And yeah. I could, I'd happy to meet at the same time that Amy is coming too. We right. could, or, and Marianne and Council of the Barge, so we could set it up. That would be fabulous. Yeah, that'd be great. Be really you know, great. Also, another question I have, Sarah, is what are you looking for with the Commission on Disabilities? What do you want us to do for you? That's my question. Yeah, really, we just wanted to get some more feedback. And we didn't want to be constantly asking the people in our parish who have disabilities to do this work. So we wanted some expertise, which is you guys, um, and and to have your feedback, basically. Okay. I would also feel very comfortable having our ADA coordinator, Keith Bonoi, doing that site visit if he's available because he is our ADA coordinator and I'd love to have him see the situation that we're talking about. Yep. We'll take it all. Yeah, we I was going to say, more the, more the merrier. More the merrier. <laughs> I, I'm looking for people who are really an expert at this. Right. I can say this or that, but I think Keith is the one that has a lot of knowledge here that can move all of us together and moving forward. Well, I'll just respond to that, Counselor. I'm happy to go to the meeting, but I think um, what they relayed is that they are technically ADA compliant, which is I can get, a, I have measurements and I can take measurements, that's totally fine. But it's those lived experiences, those minute details, those things that make the space more inviting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's kind of what they're getting at, and I can't speak to that. So okay. I'm happy to go there and and measure uh, and bring my um, 
level. Um, and I just bought it, so I'm really happy to use it. Um, <laughs> but obviously, I can't speak for other people with uh, those type of experiences. But well, we would appreciate even if you did that. Yeah, that kind of opens up the doors for us. Rodney, you have a question? Rodney? Rodney? I have a question. I have a question. Go for it. Go ahead, Rodney. Is seeing, is seeing a parking lot behind the church. Is there a parking lot behind the church? The parking lot is actually in front of the church. Um, there's mm -hmm. two sections. One um, sort of right as you would come into the side door and and then there's a sort of circle drive and you there's visitor parking in both places mm -hmm. any oh, other sarah, questions i i think uh, i i, I want to thank sarah for being here and also her one of her employees from the church Barbara, thank you dearly and it will be very interesting to take a look at it and hearing our ada coordinator come forth about the space the measurements and so forth like that so apparently we're very willing to help you go in the right direction we all want to work together there's no question about it great Yes, yeah. thank you very much. Yes, many thanks to all. <laughs> and Keith has our email addresses if that's the easiest way to get a hold of us. Awesome, and, th and thank you very much for, for coming to our meeting and talking to us about this. It's really, really, really great. We are, really appreciate your time. Yeah, we awesome. certainly do. Thank you so much. <laughs> cool, of course, thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 So I'll, I'll uh, coordinate with, uh, with them uh, and uh, yeah, you all are well welcome to uh stay for the meeting as well. Thank you. Yep. Okay. One second, sir. Uh, so our next item agenda is on the call to make nomination for officers. And we're going we would vote at the next meeting, but um talk about it at this meeting about like what we're gonna do and who we're gonna nominate or basically. Um, so Keith, I guess we'll start with, with, um, asking about the last election that we had, um, December of 22, when we had an election, which was less than a year ago. Um, I guess my question is, why do we need, why do we need another election because less than a year later? Because we do it yearly. But we don't, though. Because we haven't. I know, but for some reason, it was overlooked. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess my question is who overlooked it? Why haven't we been having an annual an annual election? Yeah, I well, guess. We've always had it, Jeremy. No, we haven't. I, 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 was, I was elected chair in 2019, and we didn't have another election until 2022. Okay, but what I'm saying mm -hmm. is... We have an ADA coordinator. He is the one that handles our meetings. Okay. And he did he didn't have he didn't have Jeremy, elections. Let me finish, please. And that's why I brought it to his attention that look, we need to do the election. Okay, and we have the election. Okay, right. And we need to do it yearly. We always have. Okay, so it's less than a year later. You know. It's like so. It's like only like maybe like eight eight months later, Amy. I don't Amy? know. Excuse me. Yeah, it was uh, in December. Sorry. Go ahead, Amy. Could could Keith? Could you speak to this? Because I'm I'm just curious. You know, I'm new to the commission as of this spring, and I attended as a member of the public mm -hmm. when the elections happened last yeah. November December. It was Dece December. Uh, December. Um. So I would just like the history and what are the regulations? Where are they coming from? I mean, I saw that blur, but um, when are they supposed to happen? And how is the commission going to move forward to be compliant with the law or the regulations? Sure, thank you. Um, so 
there's a lot of little things we'll just touch on. First, I work with the chair and the vice chair um, to manage these meetings, but also with the city clerk. So, you know, I, me and Jeremy and Emma, we sit down, we work over the agenda. Um, so some of those things come up from these meetings. And sometimes like this, uh, the meeting of the officers mm -hmm. or um, something, some of that information comes from the city clerk. And the city clerk, um, they look at, you know, if we need to vote on officers, if someone's needs to have their, um, to get with the city clerk to do, do an oath, or if they're new members, mm -hmm. or if their membership is expiring. So the city clerk kind of handles that. Um, and she did relay that um, we need to have a, you know, we don't have um, a uh, a vote for officers on for this year, and then it needs to happen every year. And we did have one in December, 2022, um, and that um, was for 2022, but it was late. You know, we should be doing that around July, September. Mm -hmm. Um, housing partnership uh, that I staff. Yes. Um, we uh, believe we had that in around July, September last year. Um, so it's been ten months. Um, but was the was... mayor was the mayor and the city clerk notified of the election last year and in, De in December? Uh, I don't believe I. I don't Cause send because that's, the... that's in the it's literally in the administrative code. It says that the mayor and the city clerk shall be notified of the election. It says it in the code. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't send the agendas to the mayor's office or. The but minutes. did you send her the election information? I mean, that's your job. Uh, true. We, we so um, I post all the minutes and the agendas have to be um. I upload the minutes them. and the agendas isn't the election. Like you were supposed to notify them of the election and who was elected mm -hmm. for chair and vice chair. It says it right here. I'm reading it. It says the mayor and the city clerk shall be notified of the officers of each body upon their election. So the the agendas are, um, I submit them to the city clerk, and then they get, um, when you see them come through the website, that's only because the city clerk mm -hmm. is notified. But if there's a process that I need to email um, the um the mayor, I'm happy to do that. Um, it's not something I've been uh, advising. So the city clerk or... was notified of our election, you're saying? Uh, I'm saying that I upload the agendas. Um, and then Does the city clerk read the agenda and then notice that we have a, the election? Did they notice that? That I do not know. Well, that I mean, that we should know, right? I mean, why do we have to have another election less than a year later? It, it's not the time in between. It's the fact that it's a new year, um, I believe. Yeah, but it's supposed to be a year apart. It's supposed to be the first meeting after July 1st. So it should have been last when we had the Crip Can screaming. That's when we should have had the election at, after the at, sure. in, in July. And, and we didn't um, – that was not a meeting where we were taking voting or anything like that, and then we took a month off. So but it should have been if you had been following the code. Council um, of Arts? Yes. Um, keep it in mind. Any board, any commission, automatically, once the mayor approves somebody, being on a board, on a commission, a committee, it comes to city service, and I have mentioned that before. And you know, once you get your letter, from the mayor's office that, or not from the mayor, but from the city clerk, that you have been selected to be on the committee, correct? Correct? Yeah. Okay, everybody, everybody. Mm -hmm. Then you then come on to that committee or that board. The procedures, again, I'll repeat. Once you apply to get on a committee, the mayor mm -hmm. will make an approval from her office of recommendation to city council. From city council, it moves out of there and it goes into city service. And what we do is call 
a candidate who has been, a, you know, selected by the mayor for approval by us. And then what we do is call them, talk with them. A lot of them do work and they love it when we call. We talk for a long time on the phone. And then we bring that recommend, recommendation of every applicant that applies for any board or committee or commission in this city with a full recommendation to full, full city council, then it's placed on the agenda. So you had to get notified, right? That from the city clerk that you have been accepted to be on the committee, correct? That's number one. Did you get a letter? Um, Jeremy? In 2019, I think I probably did. I think you did. Okay. So that's how you got into our committee. Okay. okay. And when you're saying that there's a problem here about it not being quite a year. Can you, well, remember, can you remember, Jeremy, the date and the month? Of my first election? I, I mean, it was, it well, was, I was, no? Yes, yes, the first. Well, election. I mean, it was 2019. I, I don't know the date, the date exactly. I joined the commission, I think in April of 20, April or May of 2019. Yeah. It wasn't long after that um, that I became chair. I don't know exactly when, but I didn't. We didn't have another election until December of twenty twenty two, right? Which was like three years late. Three years later, basically. So right. we skipped three. We skipped like two elections, basically. Right. I have to say, Jeremy, it got overlooked. Okay, we move on. We move on. Okay, but we did have an election, is what I'm trying to say. Right. We did and Emma and I election. were elected. And the positions are a year at a time. Some on committees or whatever could be a two-year term or a three-year term. I don't know. I think it's kind of strange. Sorry, I'll call you. I just want to say, finish. I think it's kind of strange that the mayor's office just and the city clerk's office seem to have no idea that we had an election. Like, what was it? Was it a mm -hmm. fake election? Yeah. Was it just for fun? Yeah, that was that's news to me today. Okay, um, Amy, what do you have? Um, you have a question. Well, Emma had her hand up first. Oh, sorry. And then I can go. Okay, Emma. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to clarify, Keith. So this, um, so so you're saying that we need to have an election now, as opposed to in December. We can't wait until December for the full year. To have um, the the city clerk said that we need to have an election. Um, so um, there's no, you know, we're not going to have it now. Uh, this month we need to let people make nominations and things like that. Right. Um, <laughs> so we need to give some people some reasonable time. Um, um, but you know. Jeremy is also running for city council, so if yeah, but you know, I, but but I would I could I could be chair until January when I become city councilor. So sure. I should I mean, or so, at least until or, or at least until December, which is a city, year later. The city clerk. I mean, uh, I often get these things about um, different things, and I take action immediately if someone needs to take a ethics class. I say, hey, you need to sign up for the ethics class uh, mm -hmm. and this seems like be something needs to happen so uh, I don't see any harm in doing it next I, month I don't think anybody okay. said anything about harm I think that we're just saying that we had an election already and we're wondering why um, Amy so um, it sounds like to me a mistake was made mm -hmm. and I don't I still don't understand or know exactly why that happened you know Keith I don't know if that's something that as ADA coordinator you're supposed to hold each year for the commission and you just didn't know that or it slipped by or you know the clerk is supposed to alert each Committee, I don't, I don't, I'm not clear on those details, but it's sounding to me like we need to get 
back as a commission, we need to get back on track to the July votes. Is that correct, Keith? To voting annually on a chair and vice chair every July. Yeah, that, so that's, it's, that's what we're trying to do. So, so this year is an awkward year, Jeremy, because the mm -hmm. vote last year was late. Right. And so this year is a is a shortened year. Like exactly. then this next future year is going to be a shortened year again with the vote being in October. It, you know, it's kind of like slowly yep. getting back to that July. Mm -hmm. Um and what I'm hearing perhaps and and also what I'm feeling is that I would love the disability commission to have a little more form and um, kind of uprightness, if that makes sense. And so we, we, you know, we follow the regulations and we have the the votes in July every year when they're supposed to be. And we, you know, we kind of hold ourselves accountable. And so, yes, it is a shortened and a little awkward year. Um, for for you, Jeremy and Emma, for you, and this next year is also going to be the same, and we can't go backwards. Mm -hmm. We can ask for that. I don't have better words, but for that form, you know, for that kind of holding this commission to um, <laughs> to that legitimacy you know to that um yeah sorry that that's the best words i can come up with but, mm -hmm. um, thank you i think you did very well amy on that marilyn i was just noticing that we didn't talk about the pandemic at all and that's right. place in this well that did happen yeah if anything about the pandemic interfered with that is a good point, definitely. And I, I and and I do agree with you, Amy. I was I, I don't I'm not um I'm I'm completely happy to have another election. I, um, I just wanted I guess I just wanted to talk about it first and, and get you know some clarity on on you know why why it's happening, basically. Um, Kathy. So thanks, Jeremy. So if if um, just piggybacking on what Amy's saying, um, do you think we can note in the minutes somewhere that then basically the plan, if that is the plan, is that we'll have a election, say sometime this fall. I don't know when you were thinking, Keith, and with the goal of next year having the election uh, in July when it should happen, just to make sure we have it documented somewhere and, and remember it. Yeah. Um, Councilor Barge. Right. I like what I just heard from Kathy and both from Amy. Keith has it down here for October, apparently, from the city clerk's office of having this election being scheduled at some point in October. So I think it's true. I think what Amy is has presented about a short time here, no matter what. It's going to happen. And I have to say, hearing about the pandemic, which is absolutely true, it has involved a lot of people here in the city on committees right down the line going into doing Zooming, made it very difficult for a lot of people attending meetings and so forth and not being able to go out because of the COVID. So I don't have a problem here about having this meeting in October. That, that's my feelings. Amy? Uh, just to, you know, make things more complicated um, <laughs> and, and, and maybe to move things along as well. Um, I would like to propose and nominate uh, Jeremy and Emma again for their current positions with, um, an eye towards uh, when you become city councilor, Jeremy, and asking if we could have another election 
at that time when you have to step down from the disability commission? And is that possible to do? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'd... I don't know on that one. I mean, I'd be happy to serve as chair until I become city councilor. Keith, and, um, yeah, uh, Emma? Sorry, Keith, can you just confirm what Amy had said about if we, like, part of having an election this October is with an eye towards um, having an election July 2024. I think that makes sense. And I was just rereading um, the city clerks and it's it's triggered by the fiscal year. So mm -hmm. the fiscal year does not care if it's January, you know, it starts July 1st. So that's the trigger. It's not, I, I always, I always think in calendars, but it's, it's the fiscal year. So mm -hmm. if you, if we voted say in May of 2023, the new fiscal year starts in June, that's only two months. But like Amy said, the idea is let's get back on a uh, trigger. Uh, and now that I know it's the fiscal year, I, uh, I'll put a reminder like, hey, June or sorry, June of 2024, we need to make notice that, hey, in two months or one month, we're going to be voting in officers. So even May, we should be thinking about it. June, hey, make nominations. July, we're making that vote. So um, it. You're talking about voting in May for a chair? Are no, no I'm, I'm saying thinking about the fact that we are letting you know now uh, about officers. We're not going to vote till next month. So mm -hmm. in the future, May 2024, hey, let everyone know we're going to be voting in, Ju you know, in July, having okay. nominations in by June. June, okay. hey, we're going to be voting next month and then July we actually vote. So it takes, you know, two months, three months maybe to kind of start thinking about that process and let everyone know that that's what's going to be happening so they can start preparing for themselves. But um, Emma, I think uh, Amy is correct. You know, okay. it's going to be shorter this year like it was this, this year, um, but uh, we should do that. And I think it's totally fine to have the vote. And if uh, Jeremy is nominated and he's voted in. That's totally fine. And if uh, city council comes up, then he can, um, uh, I guess, resign and then there can be a new vote or something like that. Cool. Sounds good. Anyone have any other questions? Okay. So the next item was to talk about the MOD grant request for support letters to make four build, uh, city buildings accessible. Oh, oh, sorry, Amy, you had another question. I didn't see you. Sorry, are we done with that? Don't we need to? Oh, I don't know. I was. I didn't mean. To, and... I didn't know if we were doing that yet. I'm um, sorry. I didn't mean to just move on like that. No, I was just confused. Uh, um, Keith, what you th what is the plan now? Is it to make nominations? Uh, I mean, Amy made a nomination, but if there's other nominations or if... Oh, okay. People, so that, okay. Um, I see. You can also, e if you don't have a nomination now, you can also email me now or later. Um, and I'll make sure it gets out, um, in the next meeting. Okay. So I accept the nomination. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> and Emma, you as well? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, cool. So um, next we could talk about the MOD grant request for support letters to make four city buildings accessible. Uh, Keith, do you want to do that? Yes. So uh, last year we applied to the same grant. So Massachusetts Office on Disability, MOD, they have a grant um, that uh, will pay for the construction of accessibility upgrades. Um, so they don't pay for the design. They don't pay for consulting or anything like that. You need to know what you're doing. You need to have a plan for it. And so last year we applied to make City Hall, Memorial Hall, a municipal building. So where the council chambers is, 
um, the door lips, automatic door openers, and the service windows, so the service desks. Some of the service desks are not accessible. They're not, they don't have the depth or the height requirement. And some of the doors do not have automatic door openers. Uh, and some of the lips are very hard to get over. Um, so I applied last year, we didn't get the grant. Um, but as part of that, um, and I'll get into this year's grant in a second. Part of that grant, I had asked you all to um, one, write a letter of recommend that this is a good thing and, and write a letter of support, um, but also to um, allow for the revolving fund uh, to be used to pay for that design cost. So the revolving fund that is of fees or fines um, of people who park in handicapped spots that do not have a placard. So that money goes into this fund and um, it is only authorized um, by the statute, the city statute um, authorized by you all um, to pay for um, um, translation services, um, braille, um, anything like that to make uh, city meetings more accessible. Um, and I'd asked last year to um, use that money, to authorize that money to pay for design costs uh, for this grant. Um, so the design costs last year was about um, $20,000, or I'm sorry, about, I asked for $12,000. <laughs> um, and that's coming out of um, the fund that has $43,000. Um, but that $12,000 would leverage um, about $60,000 in construction costs if we get the grant. Um, so it's kind of the same thing. We're, um, so I'll be asking for that letter of support um, and, and um, uh, the authorization to use that revolving funds to um, pay for the design costs. So... Uh, right now, the design costs are about $20,000, and the construction will be um, probably seventy dollars to $80,000. So we're getting four times, if we get the grant, we'll get about four times the amount of money uh, from the state as we, as we put into it with the revolving fund. Um, I, I just want to finish up what I have first, and then I'll answer questions. Um, so we're, I'm basically taking the same application mm -hmm. and I'm adding, uh, the senior center, uh, when we had our meeting there in June for the Crip camp, we saw some things that could be changed, to make better. Um, so we're out adding to that application, um, automatic door openers for the, um, senior center, the front doors, um, the bathrooms, the doors to the great room, which is the big hall where we had the meeting, and then the um, recreation room. Uh, the back door towards the parking lot has automatic door openers, and the building is ADA compliant. Um, the the not the knob doors, but the the lever, the flat piece of the wind do door, that's compliant. Um, but adding um, automatic door openers mm -hmm. would would make it much easier to access from the front and going to the bathroom, things like that, especially if you have a, if you have a mobility device, you can hit the button, it gives you enough time to, to get in there. So um, uh, any questions right now? I, I do talk fast and uh, there's a lot there, but I'm happy to um, answer any questions. Counselor? Yes, Keith. Um, which I did talk with you previously. I did talk with um, our city council finance director who we work with very closely. Several, several, several months ago, I brought forth here at the Commission on Disability, we had like about 23,000 in that funding. She told me today, which I did tell Keith previous before this meeting, we have $43,656,000.55, which is quite a bit of money, quite a bit of money. 
And like I have mentioned before, Jeremy, and everybody else on this commission, there was never a revolving fund. It was I and Councilor Eugene Casey working with Mayor Narkowitz to make it happen. We had absolutely nothing. I will support this letter 100%. The only concerns I have, which I told Keith today, is mm -hmm. coming into city council chambers. You know how when you come through the front door, then you go through another door, and then you come down the hall and take a right to come into city council. The bathrooms in there, the men and the woman, I'm a little concerned about are they set up ADA compliance in the bathrooms. Also, the door coming into the council chambers in the hall. I've had people tell me how heavy it is and to open it being in a wheelchair also. It is difficult. Also, once you get into city council, you are looking at the emergency door. And I'm not sure if, and we only can use that if it's an emergency. I don't know if there is also an automatic button on that door either. And I told Keith I had great concerns and I'm hoping that this also will be included here because we have more and more people coming in with different types of disabilities. And it bothers me, especially with people in wheelchairs and so forth, trying to mm -hmm. open up that door to get into that chamber. Um, to I, answer wanted, I, I just wanted to give you heads up why I will support <laughs> this, because that $43,656.55, we need to move on. We need to move on and get this work done. And one question I do have for you, um, Keith, have we ever thought about looking at capital improvements of getting money to do certain things? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's more of a um, city central services uh, question. Right. Uh, I mean, they're always looking at, um, you know, the, the buildings and such, um, but that's, that's not... Um, but it would be our responsibility in the commission, along with you as an ADA coordinator, to approach them to say, we have a problem here. <laughs> you know, can you support us and help us looking at the getting the money from capital improvements? Mm -hmm. We were going to do that for Ryan Road School for the bathroom. Uh, yeah, we, I've certainly reached out to them and asked them about their plans for these uh, buildings and the service desks oh, to good. see if there's no, I don't, don't want to overlap, um, but they, you know, they're, they're in charge of the buildings um, kind of overall. So that's their wheelhouse. Um, but to answer your question about the council chambers, this, this, grant is we're not requesting any money for council chambers that is a much bigger project um that would um that itself would be its own project um because there's uh, there's a lot of constraints um because of the way it's set up um and i th the numbers of people that are serviced um per month um at say city council chambers versus all the other buildings or all the other offices uh i felt like there's a more of a daily need so if you're going to pay your taxes or if you're going to the city assessor's office mm -hmm. those are things you need to do for your kind of everyday administration of your own self um and then city council chambers um still very important but I think it's a bigger project um, that this grant is not going to cover. Could I ask you, Keith, what is the price of installing the so, push button knobs for people with disabilities and wheelchairs mm -hmm. coming into that council chamber? Do you know what a price would be for just that? If not, I will call Central Service and talk with a new director on that because to me, 
I mean, sometimes our council chambers are filled with people. So I want to know what a price would be just for adding that on so people in a wheelchair or whatever, even with crutches, they can just press and that door will open. Yeah, I, I don't have a, a cost estimate for that. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'm I'll talk with the director sure. because maybe Keith, there's a way that we can get capital improvements for that because I feel that's in dire need, dire need. I'll check it out. Amy? Does anyone else want to comment before I? <laughs> um, go for it. Um, okay, there. I have several different trains of thought. So number one, just want to kind of have in the record that I really hope that council chambers and the restrooms are accessible by the time Jeremy becomes a city councilor. Thank you. Very short timetable, but I um, think that would be really nice. Important that we as a city um, see that and respond. Um, number two, I have some detailed questions, Keith, if that's okay, about the grant and the senior center, because I've spent um, a fair amount of time there doing the farmer's market in the winter. Um, but then I also don't want to lose sight of kind of uh, more procedural questions for us as a commission about the revolving fund. So, um, the, the detailed questions, Keith, when you say the automatic doors on the front, do you mean a, the push button or do you mean when someone approaches the door, they automatically open without pushing anything? Push button for the doors closest to Con Street and the bathroom, all of them push button, yeah. Okay, that's why I was confused because I've only come in from the parking lot and they already have the push buttons. Okay, so the doors to from Con Street don't have push buttons. Thank you. And then which bathrooms are you talking about? Because the two uh, single stalls by the great room, they are the easiest bathrooms I've ever gotten into in a wheelchair. There's like no weight to the doors. There's no resistance. You can just open them and they swing open. Uh, yeah, those bathrooms, uh, single stalls. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, Marilyn, could you fill me in? Because I remember you speaking at the meeting about how difficult the bathrooms were to get into. And I was in a manual wheelchair multiple times going into those bathrooms and was so grateful for those doors. So... <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. I don't That's know good to I, hear. They almost beat me up. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. No, all I said was the doors almost beat me up. I oh, that's not good. Uh -huh. So, I, I don't know what the discrepancy is. Okay. But, you know, so, it was hard to get into the bathroom with, yeah, with those. In, hard to get out. Okay. Okay. Well, different, you know, we're all in different circumstances. And so we all interact differently with, with everything. <laughs> Very true. Right. And she did talk about that. Marilyn did talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering if it was the far bathrooms, you know, yeah. on the other side of the room. It was the one that was uh, near the great room on the left. There's one on the right, one on the left, I think. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you for that input. Um, okay, and then, and then kind of big picture for us, um, it really makes sense to me that mm -hmm. as a commission that has, um, deciding privileges on the revolving funds, that we would have a monthly update on how much is in the fund how much has come in, how much has gone out, um, and 
again, I would like, I mean, I am a concrete sequential thinker, but I would like really clear guidelines on how that money can be spent. So I know um, Councillor Labarge last year, you had brought up that those funds could not be used for um, a consultant. And so we had questions about that and we're in the spring, sorry, not last year. Um, you know, and we had discussions about, well, can we pay for the flyers to be printed for the Crip Camp? And can we use those funds to play to pay for Wait, it? future? We have to leave. Uh, Rod Rodney says, excuse yeah. me, I have to leave the meeting now. Oh, oh okay, Rodney. Thank you. Good it's to see you. Day. See you next time. Good to see you, Rodney. Um, you know, if, if we're going to ever do a, a disability pride march, can those funds be used for that? So there's been, you know, questions and conversation and is there a document of what exactly the funds can pay for? Um, and I do remember an email from you, Keith. I did not have a chance to go back and find that to find what you'd laid out. Um, I, I do believe you said that funds could be used to improve the experience of people with disabilities in the city of Northampton. So actually putting in a, a door opener, for example, at city hall. Um, so I just, I would like, and I, you know, I'm one of how many of us are there? Nine of us, right? So I'd love to hear other voices, but I would really appreciate having, if we're going to be responsible for this revolving fund, then we need to know what's in it and what's coming in and what's going out and how exactly we can spend it because that will inform how we vote on things when they come to us. I'm Marianne. Councilor LaBarge. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. And I I know our ADA coordinator, I think Chris Palamas had talked with him. And Chris was highly involved in doing the new ADA whole plan, the whole plan over. As far as consultants, probably can do it now. I don't know. Okay. That's why I brought it up. Apparently, it must be okay to do it. I would like to see the language on that, but to be realistic with you, when you don't have nothing and all of a sudden the COVID has relaxed, okay, businesses reopened again, and you saw people parking in handicapped parking places without placards. It has risen this money up over 20 something thousand dollars. I'm not going to say no as a city councilor to move forward on this one. This is really important to me that at least it's a beginning. We're doing something ethically that's in right taste here for people with disabilities, not just with wheelchairs or whatever. People have different types of disabilities. They could be arthritic with their hands or whatever. And that's why I want to talk with central service and I want a price of what it costs to put an electrical button on the door coming into council chambers. To me, it can't cost that much money. I don't know. It could be, it could be a thousand dollars or two, but it's worth it. I don't want to see anybody trying to struggle, which I have in a wheelchair and somebody had to get up and open and help them with the door. That should not be happening. So as far as the financing part of it, we never got a report on it monthly. Way back, even then we didn't. We'd ask for it. And the ADA coordinator, even Linda Desmond, Pat Shaughnessy down the line would get that report when it was requested. And that's why I did it today. I'm on finance committee and have been on it forever. I want to know what the ball game is here and what we're playing with. 
So we have something in our revolving fund, just in case something comes up and we need to go ahead and say, let's take this money, Keith. Can we go ahead and do this? That's it. I was just going to add Ben, Ben just mentioned in the comments. Um, my understanding is that the buttons are genuinely generally cheaper than the hardware to open the door that can vary greatly depending upon the specifics of the door in question. Yeah, I'm going to talk with the um, department head of central service and get a price on that. It is needed. So, uh, I, I just want to mention, uh, I'm hearing about the hearing the council chambers, and I know that's a project. It's a bigger project. Um, I'm hearing that. Uh, I want to put a put in that. Um, there's two other agenda items, and I want to leave question or time for questions about my ask here now. So I'm asking for two things, really. One, a letter of support in general for the grant, saying the disability commission, you know, supports the grant application. Um, that's one, and then uh, a letter or a um, not a letter, but uh, authorization to use the revolving funds um, towards the design. And that design would be about $20,000. Um, we don't know because we haven't contracted it out yet, uh, but it's about um, anywhere from eight to 10% of design. So I'm leaving in some uh, wiggle room uh, if the construction comes back. Um, um, but if I don't have a clear answer after the end of this meeting, the grant is due on Friday and I won't be, I won't be applying because I can't go forward unless I have design costs. Okay. Counselor. Yes. I'd like to make a motion, um, for a letter of support of the grant application. That's number one. Second. I would like to make a motion to authorize the use of the revolving funds for the design. That's second. Okay. Um. Anybody second that, Emma? Sorry, I just want I I just wanted to clarify, Keith. If we approve this, this is like a one-time approval. Right, like if there were other projects that needed design work, we would talk as a commission. We'd have to vote in support of that, like in support of using the funds for different projects. Yes. Yes, and the the language uh, it, it doesn't say specifically about the MOD grant, but it says specifically for um, moving um, about the. the the transition plan. Um, so, uh, and I believe the order the order doesn't um, last forever. Um, I'm looking at the la this one, the one from last year, um, and it says specifically to implement the ADA self assessment and transition plan. And these things are all identified in those transition plan. Um, but yes, um, we're not going to be using this for other things the the language so for last year's um it's per the recommendation of the disability commission and the mayor and then this goes to the city council and then the city council um there's a presentation by myself um and then um they would vote on it um so there's multiple kind of checks before before anything um could happen Thank you. Keith, I also have a question, please. You're saying that Friday is a deadline, correct? Will it have the price then on Friday? If I don't have a price, then I, I don't have a full application. Um, so I'm still working on my cost estimator to get okay. that final price. Right. Um, but so I, you would, once you get that final price, would you send it to all of us on this advisory committee? I can't promise I'm going to send you the price before the application is due, 
um, because I have other things to do on that day as well. Um, but uh, yeah, prior to um, the next meeting, I can send an update yeah. if I applied or not. I appreciate that. Okay, Jeremy, there's two things that we I just brought for a motion to approve. Okay, does anyone want to second that? Sorry, can I just clarify, Keith, what you just said that um, this type of work is listed as on how the revolving funds should be spent? Uh, from last year's order, 22-170. The order authorizing expenditures for accessible parking fines. Um, and then uh, it just says that um, the Disability Commission recommended expending funds for design, architectural fees, plans, and studies to make city buildings, programs, and services accessible to people with disabilities and to implement the ADA self-assessment and transition plan. So even even if we didn't have something for tonight, going off this, we couldn't use it for other things that are not directly related to those line items. Um, so I'm doing my due diligence to make sure that uh, we have everything we need to um, get that um, use the revolving funds if we're um, authorized to grant the grant. And you said that was the Disability Commission who said that in 2022? So it's coming Correct. from a past body of us. Right, so last year, um, I uh, I believe we took one month off, but um, we missed two months in a row. So I had a little more time last year because we met more, um, mm -hmm. but um had time to make this presentation to the disability commission mm -hmm. they recommended this um with the officer with the bring this to the mayor's office they kind of agree with the 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 assessment and so this was put forth to the city council um with a recommendation upon the mayor and the disability commission right. and the city council uh, approves it mm -hmm. Okay, I thought a year ago that the disability commissions voted no not to support the. No, we didn't. That. Uh, I mean, this is dated September fifteenth, twenty twenty two. Um, yeah. Mm. Counselor. Yes, thank you, Jeremy. I think there was a misunderstanding with that, Amy. What we were concerned about was how much that cost was going to be, not knowing how much was in the revolving account, which was critical. Right. I, as a city councilman, okay, was very concerned about what if all of a sudden our money just went downhill and we didn't have anything good there. If you look at this right now at 43000 and if it costs 17000 or twenty. It's going to keep going up because we went over already over 24,000 something just on fines because of opening up the restaurants and parking and so forth, you know? So I think there was a misunderstanding with that. I was very concerned as a city councilor of not knowing a price. And when I talked with Keith today, he said it could be between the 17,000, 20 something thousand bracket. Knowing we got 43,000 and we're gonna help people with disabilities. I could never say no to that. Okay, anyone, does anyone second the motion to, uh, to approve? I second the motion. You second the motion, okay. So we'll have a vote on that. Um, Emma? Oh, sorry, you're on mute. Oh. Emma, oh, you're on mute. Sorry, there you yeah. go. Um, oh, that's yes, good. I, I support it. Excuse me, which motion <laughs> is this, Jeremy? 
I'm sorry, say again, Amy? Which motion is this? There were two motions. Okay, so yeah, we'll do, we'll start with the first one, which was to authorize the MOD grant application. Is that right, Keith? It was or, to, right. Support letter first. Support letter, right, yeah. Okay, Emma said, yeah, um, and then um, Rod, Rodney's not here. Um, Council LaBarge? Yes. Kathy, Mary? Yes. Marilyn Claire? Yes. Michael Morton? Michael, you there? Yes. You approve? Okay. Um, Amy? Yes. <laughs> Okay, I and I, I approve. So, um, and now on the second one. Yep, the second one was an authorization for the use of the revolving funds for the design. Okay, Emma. Uh, yes. Um, Rod. Oh, sorry, uh, Counselor. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Marilyn. Yes. Michael. Amy? Yes. Uh, and yes, I say yes also. I guess I just want to add that I feel like next time we do the, uh, have a conversation about our revolving funds, that is, we have more, that we have more than just one meeting to talk about it, because it is, it is like a, a big deal to be spending this much money, but I do, but I do agree that it's, it's important to do so. <clears throat> cool. All right, so moving on to the next, we're going to talk um, to discuss how people feel about meeting in person. Counselor? Yes, um, I'm just going to say my feelings because we just went through this with city council and everybody agreed about staying with doing Zooming because of and doing both, okay? As long as we had our quorum. But our council president is checking it out about, well, July and August, we did it by Zooming. And all of us were on Zooming. So he's checking out about the whole idea of a quorum. I feel because there is a slow uptick, and it's happening. We just had a counselor who had it two weeks ago, that we need to be very, very careful here very careful for all of our health. So I would highly recommend that we stay on it. Zooming, our meetings are only an hour of the hassle of going in and coming out. That's how I feel about this until right now, because of the state law, if you have a problem, a health issue or a family issue or whatever, whatever we have up until 2025 of staying to zooming yep and we had counselors you see them we're, we're home at some points and don't come into the council chambers and that's how we feel about it now are you a, are you allowed to do are you allowed to do the, uh, the council meetings on zoom like yes. if you want as an option oh okay just curious right medical yeah. reasons or family that's ill or anything like that as long as that there is a quorum and like i just stated our council president is checking checking that out about the quorum because you got to have five well july and august we're all on zooming we had the, the whole team you know nine of us so he was checking that out and this meeting is only an hour. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've, I'm, I agree with you also. Like there was a time where I, or at least I, I was open to the idea of in person, but I feel like right now is maybe not the best time to do it because like win winter is going to happen soon. COVID, yep. COVID is on the rise right now. And it exactly. just feels like, a, feels like a weird time to be doing that. But I do maybe hopefully in the future, but yeah, that's how I feel. Yep. I think right now everybody's health is a concern. Yeah. You know, and they are asking people to get their shots again. Also your flu shots, your COVID shots. So we need to be careful here. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> uh, Amy? 
Um, I could go either way, but maybe we could revisit it in the spring, you know, after winter and hopefully whatever spike has gone back down. Yeah, I definitely feel like we should um, come back to it. Yeah, okay. I, agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, one more. Oh, that's another thing too, Jeremy. Yep. Because we're going to be doing some big time renovation in back of City Hall. Okay. Mm -hmm. and also, we're going to be a lot of construction work going on. Cars up on the top level of City Hall. Some of the parking is going to be gone. So these are things to start looking at once they start rebuilding. They're going to be putting apartment buildings, you know, where the building inspectors park when you come down the stairs. You probably don't do that anyways, but further down at the bottom, there's a parking lot where the building inspectors then park. That's all going to be gone. So we need to look at that. If they start that construction, we're better off staying at the Zooming. Okay. If not, go to the senior center. Right. Okay. Um. So let's do the, the last item on our agenda before we adjourn um, would be um, to discuss how people felt about the Crip Camp screening that we had in July. Just kind of share any if anybody has an opinion to share. Yeah. Um, counselor? I thought it was excellent. I really enjoyed it. And I was very pleased to see people that had attended that. And I want to thank everybody on this advisory committee for working tirelessly to make it happen. Thank you. I just have an idea. Go, uh, yeah, uh, go for it, Michael. Thank you. I was wondering if we could do a, a media thing, the Northampton the video. Uh, Ability in that Northampton media on the C Committee on Disability kind of to go into it, talking to people who are doing it and what the plans are for things to kind of have our own film maybe next year. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe we could get ideas, people could put in ideas in the winter, like what they would like to see, and we could figure out what we might be able to do to put something together to um, have a record of what the committee was doing and uh, plans for the future kind of is a positive thing. That's an excellent idea. Oh. Yeah, let's do that. Maybe we could have another discussion about that at the next meeting. We can start planning, Whatever. planning ahead. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um. Anybody else have any thoughts about how they felt about the screening? I enjoy. I thought it went really well. I do too. Cool. Yeah. I I really appreciated the turnout and the attendance yeah. from other commissions. That was really value. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun to, to keep planning more events like that in the future. Okay. Is there any other business that um, is not anticipated that we'd like to talk about before we adjourn? Yeah, somebody was just um, on chat. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I see that now. Jacob Drew, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ignore you. Hi. <laughs> I, my, my name is Jacob. Hello. Uh, I'm relatively new in town um been here for a couple of years uh my son uh, i'm here primary my son uses a wheelchair has cp he's in eighth grade um i'm trying to get involved um and my my first question is uh is it how do you petition to remediate the terrible state of the sidewalks in this town um <laughs> and I would love it for my kid to be able to go uh, to Cooper's and buy me uh, stuff. Uh, you know, I need to send them on errands and that kind of thing. But it's like a life or death, uh, you know, route traveling these sidewalks. So I figure this would be the most knowledgeable group of people around how to 
pitch in and um that's what i'd like to just ask the commission that you know and maybe this is already discussed frequently but anyway there's my no question thank you jacob that's actually the um like the sidewalk um the state of the sidewalks in our town is like the reason i joined the commission uh like three years ago um i'm, I'm also i'm a wheelchair user and and um yeah I, i've definitely i know you i know exactly what you mean and that's that's why I, like you know I, I joined the commission and why i'm running for city councilor also is because like yes the sidewalks are really bad and it's been a challenge to to try and and get them fixed and um it's a challenge what's that i said it sure is a challenge yeah i mean that's yeah that's I, I I wish that I could give you like a clear answer on like how right. who to go to and how to get them fixed because I guess like yeah that I would love to know that information myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah counselor. Yeah, Jacob, where do you live? Uh, on Chestnut, um, okay. a few houses, a few houses in from. Bridge. I've been there. I was at a site several times with some of the residents there. And the sidewalks and how they were putting the box in and so forth like oh, that. Oh, yeah, the telemetry box, we're not happy about that either. But I anyway, know. one thing at a time. But let yeah. me tell you, Jacob, that Florence Heights, the big hill coming down, we have tried going on 16 years to have that sidewalk be done accessible. Nothing. If you get on DPW's Board of Public Works roads, sidewalks, it will show you the list that they do yearly. So I have many people right now who are very, very angered that that is not even being taken care of. Hey, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it's just like a, a fact that like all disabled people is. in Northampton have to go on the street a lot of the time because the sidewalks are so bad. Well, they don't want to go on that street. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah. Sometimes the streets are too bad too. Keith, uh, you were going to say something. Uh, so, Drew, uh, Jacob, uh, nice meeting you a couple months ago about this nice. telemetry box. Um, yeah. So, there's a few things. Uh, one, um, we have a. I mean, this is not an answer, but uh, talking about the process, you know, we so a couple of years ago, 2017, 2018, uh, the city contracted with Alta, and they did a sidewalk inventory. So it's looking at the state, uh, one, just the analysis of how many and where are they, um, but then the state of all the sidewalks and then how to prioritize them. Um, and so um, they looked at, you know, proximity to downtown core, so Florence and Northampton, uh, and then uh, proximity to schools. And then I think it was um, some other uh, metric. And so using those and where those things overlap is kind of like um, a proxy for kind of like priority of sidewalks. Um, and so, and then secondly, like um, for my office, my, my role as community development planner, um, I can pay for sidewalks in a low income area and Northampton has a very small uh, percent of our um, city blocks that are considered low income by HUD standards. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a prioritization of looking at, okay, the funding and where is it gonna come from? That's not a good answer, um, but there are um, on, the, on the city, there's something to consider in the future um, is um, the DPW, they have an unshoveled sidewalk um like a little um app on their website and so if someone has their someone's not shoveled their sidewalk you can um make a request whatever mm -hmm. um but it might be something to consider if if we could do something like that for sidewalks that are non-compliant or something like that and that just might be a way to um, get better data um, it's not, it may not trigger, um, things right away, but thinking about, um, you know, we don't know where I know in Northampton, there's, you know, 803 people with mobility impairments or who use devices or something, but I don't know where they live. So if there's a, you know, a higher distribution of people living in a certain area, that, that would be good information to know. 
um, but that's kind of a, a more of a process thing. And, you know, we can talk about that in another uh, kind of disability commission meeting. Yeah, uh, I, had, I had been wondering about priority. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I had been wondering about priority and w wondering about, you know, if there's, as soon as I was speaking with my council member, uh, Alex Jarrett, just this past weekend, um, and he was explaining how, about that review process that went on a couple of years ago, and some hundred and fifty thousand, hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars is allocated a year. Is, is what he said. He he wasn't one hundred percent sure, um, but then he said like sometimes that money will be if if roads are being done, they'll redo the sidewalks also. Um, and that they may take money from that fund to do those sidewalks, which seems like a misuse of funds. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I really don't know much as much about it that I, I should I should barely be talking. Um, but no, it's I think it's great that you that you brought this up because I mean it's it's the number it's probably the number one issue in Northampton for disabled people. Yeah, I mean I, I my son is willing to. Um, like we go with you with videos and I record him nearly dying. Um, yeah. Um, but like we just went and walked, tried to walk from our house to Chestnut and he was in his chair. And it, I mean, like, it's crazy. Like mm -hmm. he, it, it's not safe. He can't do it. And he's 13. He should be able to go as a 13 year old to the store. And yeah. And, and eventually he might want to, like when he starts getting older, he's going to want to go to work. And, you know, yes. be able to get places, you know, and you want them to be able to do that. Right. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Um, Emma, were you going to say something? <laughs> um, just, I, um, hello, Jacob. I feel like I've been like kind of laughing a little bit the whole time inappropriately because as a wheelchair user, I have also repeatedly brought up this issue to the commission and it kind of I feel like we talk about it we like write letters to the mayor kind of like encouraging um something to happen with repairing the sidewalks and um we just like <laughs> I don't know how much power we actually have as an advisory committee to like do anything about the sidewalks. I, my impression is that we can only encourage people in positions of more power to like pay attention to this. And so I'm wondering if for the next commission meeting, we can put this um topic on the agenda um and just like maybe have some more um clarity from Keith about like if there is something we can actually do or some funds that we can sort of um petition for or <sighs> yeah that's all. <laughs> yeah. Um, ben put something in the chat, just so you know. Hi, Jacob. Um, it's a link to northhamptonmass.gov uh, forward slash request tracker to at least report it. And, you know, then there's at least a record of it being reported. Um, I will say videos are very powerful though. You know, the visual. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, Mar uh, Marilyn? This isn't specifically about what Jacob brought up, but um, is that all right? Yeah, so, yeah what, whatever you want. Decided I wanted to go to Walmart in my chair, and um, it was a nightmare. <laughs> At Damon Road and and King Street, the sidewalks on the side that you can actually travel on, because the other side you've got the highway. Um, 
exit uh, entrance, but um, the whole intersection on the left-hand side, if you're going away from downtown, was a total mess, torn up rocks and stones. And I mean, I, you know, I really had to be very uh, creative to get past that part. And then I went on the sidewalk and I got about halfway up the sidewalk and it turned into literally a jungle. Uh -huh. Huge weeds crossing the sidewalk. And uh, it was very hard to get through and a little frightening. So I was wondering, how, who do I report that to? To get somebody up there to mow or do something to, to fix the sidewalk. I mean, these are simple things, you know? It just needs to be mowed. Any any ideas? Oh, come on. About who I would call? No. Um, I I guess you could report. You could go to this request form and and request and talk and. I'm not sure exactly. Um, Keith, do you know who who would be best to contact? Oh, okay, we can't hear you, Keith. Uh, but now, okay, yeah, uh, yes. DPW, uh, they're the ones that do uh, maintenance like that. B D W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Department of Public Works. Public Works. Okay. Marilyn. Yes. Marilyn, their number is five eight seven one five seven zero. Okay. Extension four three zero three, and that is Cindy Quinn. Okay, she's excellent. I can't tell you how many potholes I send to her all the time by phone. Okay, she is excellent. Tell her I told you to give her a call. All right. All right, because I think that something could be done definitely. Thank you. You're Thank you, Marilyn. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, I, I agree with what Emma said that maybe we should like talk about that at the next meeting or, or, or continue talking about the sidewalk issue and what we could do as a commission to at least like make recommendations to the to the mayor or something or you know about what we could do. Right. Also, too, I think we should consider of having our Senator Joe Comfort come to a meeting and state rep Lindsay Sabadosa. Okay. That's where it's really at. We need yeah. to, that's what it's at. The city let's, only has so much money. Let's do that. I, that sounds great. Yeah. I think we should. I agree. Cool. Um, Amy, I think you had your hand up also when we talked about other business. Yeah, I was just waiting for this to wrap up. Okay. I, so I anybody, hope you'll Jacob, I hope you'll join us for next month's meeting and this conversation because yes, please do. Come. We need all the energy we can muster to move this forward. I, I certainly will. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I I do thank you, Jeremy. Two things: I if it's possible to request um, that they go on agenda for next month, um, I would love for us to revisit. Um, the revolving funds conversation. I don't mean to be to dead horse, but I think it is really important for us to know what the finances are. If we are responsible for those funds, it makes me very uncomfortable to not know and to just have this, you know, blob out there that we're responsible for, but we don't know anything about. Um, and then number two, um, going back to our June meeting, um, when we had the group from Smith College come and ask for um, an exemption from the Massachusetts Architectural Advisory Board regulations um, on their building to make the front part to not have the front part of the building be accessible, but that the entrance, the accessible entrance be at the backside. Um, I have thought about that a bit after that meeting and vote and um, 
I would love for us as a commission to look at our process um, and to have more form around that. So um, I think that we each individually and as a commission need to understand what exactly we're using to evaluate things that come forward and ask, you know, entities that ask for exemptions, how are we evaluating them? You know, what's the rubric? What are the points that we're looking at? Um, because it really felt like this, go with your gut, how does this feel to you? What do you think? And I am uncomfortable with that. It's very complex issues and um, I, I know that I would like to be more informed and educated about the the rules and regulations, the process, when would exemptions make sense and when would they not? Instead of, I mean, it really felt like it was thrown at us and we were forced to vote. And I did not appreciate the, the whole process and felt really uncomfortable afterwards. So I'm asking that this be an agenda item that we come up with somehow collectively how we evaluate things that will inevitably come before us again. Thank you, Amy. Councillor? Yes, Amy. And also Keith has to be involved in this. Yes, absolutely. I, I I agree, Amy. I think that that um, that we should that, like if we're, if we're like we're we're gonna um, if we have to deal with that again when somebody comes to us to make a quick decision like that, like how are you know what what are what are the factors that we're looking at to make those decisions, and um, yeah, I agree that 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 when that happened, that was I feel like we need we needed more time and we didn't have that time and it was like a lot of pressure on all of us, and it almost feels like sometimes that just because we're disabled people that were expected to be experts on this thing, on, on architecture, and you know we're not yeah. architects just because we're disabled. You know what I mean? So like, we need more time to think about those things. I agree. And so yeah, so I think it should be an agenda item. Kathy, um, I just wanted to say that I know I think three of us here have taken the um, community access monitor training, and that we learned you know some things in that process that were that. I know as having taken that training, when we went through that process, I recognized that that was the process, you know, that had been gone through, but I'm not sure everyone else who hasn't done that training understands it. So maybe we could just have some background about that also that would help us in making those decisions. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I haven't taken that class myself and I should do that. I will, I will do that. Um, so are you, Kathy, are you suggesting that we talk about like, what you learned in that class, like at a meeting or like talk about like, maybe, like maybe, kind of thing. maybe the three of us, maybe Keith and, and Amy and I could get together and just pull out the salient points, you know, that would be helpful to everyone else going forward with those kinds of when those kinds of situations come forward. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. It will help educate all of us on on, on that. Cool. Anyone else have any thoughts? Nope. Marianne? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> that sounds fine. I second that motion. Okay. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>